In this video, I'd like to prove at least the first step of the Taylor Remainder Theorem, uh, also known as Taylor's Inequality. This theorem tells us that if we have a function, f of x, and its Taylor series, t of x centered at x naught, then the remainder in the kth partial sum is bounded by this inequality right here. And so let's start by just recalling that the kth partial sum, t sub k, is a polynomial. And this is given by the sum, and goes from 0 up to k, of f, so the nth so the usual Taylor series formula here. So we write out the coefficients, x minus x naught to the power n. And the remainder term, so this is obviously, this, this series just truncated at some value k. This becomes a finite polynomial, and the remainder is the tail of the series. So, so the Taylor series itself, t of x, is equal to this partial sum, t sub k of x, plus the remainder, which is the tail, like I said, the tail of the, of the series, um, for any k. All right, So for any or for all k, uh, integers, of course. So positive integers k. I'll just write it like this here. So the idea is that if we want to make sure that our function f equals its Taylor series, we have to show that as k gets bigger, this uh, remainder term gets smaller. It goes to zero, in fact. So the tail should should go to zero. And to do that, we need this theorem. So we need to be able to, well, no, we don't need it, but you, this is the most useful tool in trying to prove that a series equals, or a function equals its Taylor series. So um, again, that's the motivation here. What we'd like to do now is prove at least uh, one step of this. We're not, we're not going to go crazy here and prove the whole thing. But let me show you how it works for at least the first remainder, and from there, hopefully, we can at least get the idea and, and believe that the statement of the theorem is going to be true. So for this proof, let's suppose, uh, number one, let's suppose that k is equal to 1, and suppose that the second derivative, so if k is equal to 1, then the remainder theorem tells us that the remainder is bounded by the next derivative, okay? So the, the, it'll be the second derivative is if k is equal to 1. And so we'll assume then that f double prime of x is less than or equal to m on some interval centered at x naught that's less than or equal to delta. So the length of the interval is less than or equal to delta in this case. Then what we're going to do is just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to some integrals, okay? So what we see is then the integral from x naught to x, remember we're inside this domain here where this bound is true, of f double prime of x dx, we can just sub out this bound, right? And we can say, okay, this integral is less than or equal to the integral x naught to x of m dx, where here m is a constant, right? It's the constant bound. And at this point, we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus because recall that f double prime of x just means f prime of x prime, right? So f prime, the first derivative, is an antiderivative of f double prime. Meanwhile, on the other side, this is an integral of a constant. This, this just means then uh, that we should multiply this number m by the length of the interval that we're integrating over. So we work on each side at the same time. On the left-hand side, the FTC gives us, fundamental theorem of calculus, gives us that this difference is equal to f prime of x minus f prime at x naught, and that's less than or equal to, we're just evaluating the inter integral, right, so we're not going to change this sign. On the other side, this is the product of m times x minus x naught, just integrate right there, right? Okay, so there is kind of the first step. The next thing we want to do is rearrange this. We can solve this for f prime of x, and then repeat the entire process, okay, because just like we have f prime was an antiderivative of f double prime, the same is true, uh, the same relationship holds for f and f prime, right? So this then tells us that we have our function f prime of x bounded by less than or equal to the function f prime at x naught, that's a constant, plus this linear term, so m times x minus x naught. And at this point, we can integrate again. All right, we, we do the same mode of reasoning at this point. We integrate from x naught to x, f prime at a, of x dx. Um, by the way, I'm being uh, 
very lazy here, and I'm not doing it on purpose, so I apologize. But here we should have an integration variable, right? So if we're moving the same the same thing up here, uh, we want to apply the fundamental theorem. This is part one of the fundamental theorem. And so if we want to have the variable upstairs in the boundary, we need to have uh, a dummy integration variable down here. So I'll just make it uh, magenta here to really draw attention to my mistakes, right? But this is less than or equal to then the integral from x naught to x of, this one's a constant, so no worries here. I'll put some parentheses here. f prime of x naught minus m, and here's a, and we need an integration variable here, right? So t minus x naught. So in this scenario, m, this looks like function notation kind of, but it's not, right? This is a number constant m times this linear term, and that's gotta get integrated dt. All right, and now we do the same thing. So we apply fundamental theorem to this term and to this term, and then this one is just a linear multiple. And let's see what happens. So we obtain, we, again, by the fundamental theorem, right? By This is fundamental theorem of calculus part one. We get that the left-hand side is equal to f of x minus f of x naught, that's got to be less than or equal to, on the right hand side, we have f prime at x naught times the difference x minus x naught. Uh, that's just the linear, uh, the length of the interval, right? So integration of a constant minus, and then on this term, this is the key. This one has to be integrated, right? And so what do we get? This is going to end up being uh, m times x minus x naught over two quantity squared. Why? We have to integrate this, right? Because this is supposed to be an antiderivative here. Uh, notice when we just cancel this out, there's a derivative here, right? This has got to be the antiderivative. So that's got to be integrated. So there we go. Um, one problem here, though, is that I have changed the sign, right? We have a plus here. This should be plus, and this should be plus. So I'm sure you saw that as I wrote it down. Now we can all fix it together. And we end up with this inequality right here. Okay, so once again, we can uh, rearrange this a little bit, but let's notice this time what I want to do is I want to move uh, this term over to the other side, and we can write this as f of x minus f of x naught minus f prime at x naught times x minus x naught. This has to be less than or equal to the way we've built this, right? m over 2 times x minus x naught quantity squared. And here's the key. We want to notice now that this is our function f of x. And this portion right here, if you factor out the minus sign, this portion right here is the first degree partial sum of our Taylor series. This is t1 of x. All right, so t1 of x is the sum f, so it's just the tangent line, right, the tangent line, and that's exactly what that is. And so if this difference is f minus t1, then if we go back up here to our definition, look at this. If we rearrange this equation right here, our rk of x is going to be the difference of t. In this case, we want to show that our function is equal to this, right? So f minus tk of x that's the remainder right there, right? That's the remainder. So what this all shows then is that the left-hand side is the kth remainder of x, and it is bounded by this ratio. So m over 2 times x minus x naught to the power 2. Remember, m is the bound on the second derivative, right? So f double prime of x is less than or equal to m. Okay, so this proves one direction in, in the case when k equals 1. So we can show the other direction um, just by taking, so, so the other direction follows from just reversing all the inequalities here, follows from assuming that uh, negative m is less than or equal to f double prime of x, and then repeating. All right, and then you repeat the entire argument, and so then we obtain, at this point, we obtain the inequality that we're looking for, which is the absolute value of the remainder term. You could think of this as the, the error in truncating after the kth step. This is always less than or equal to then 
Uh, this is, you know, we're just doing R1. I wrote K here. This is K equals 1 for what we've shown. But this is uh, less than or equal to this difference, absolute value here. And in general, all right, you can see how this would extend by just taking more and more integrals. So to show this for a general K, you just repeat for basically K integrals, right? K plus 1 integrals. All right, but the steps are all going to be the same, and we end up with our theorem then that the remainder is bounded by the maximum value over the interval, so of this x minus x naught less than or equal to delta of the absolute value of f double prime of x on this interval, right, divided by k plus 1 factorial, this is not double prime, this is the k plus first derivative times x minus x naught to the k plus 1 power. And so there you go right there, there's your bound on the Taylor remainder, so the Taylor remainder theorem.